So these are dead hard drives, and when they died, they took my first couple years of game development with them. They didn't die slowly, it was sudden. But I wanted to try to recover the data, so I took them to a repair shop. And would you believe these people asked me for $1,200 to fix these two hard drives? What's good everyone? I go by Shinobi and it's been 10 years since I first installed Unreal. And to celebrate this milestone, I wanted to reflect on lessons learned so far because that's the whole reason this channel exists, to show what I'm learning. And believe me, I still have a long way to go, but I still wanna hear what you've learned in your time with game development. So it felt right to do 10 lessons and I've added some footage of projects that I never intended to see the light of day in this video. So let's get it. Back up your work. So of course I didn't pay to have these things repaired. None of the work that was on these drives was good enough to justify that price. Plus I used to work in storage so I knew they were ripping me off. But I guess when your business is centered around recovering someone's most cherished memories like photos and work projects, you can get away with that. But Imagine working on a game for like seven years and then losing all the data like this. That just wouldn't be good, right? So my general rule is to now have my data saved in three places. I keep a local uh, external backup drive that just backs up nightly. And then I back up to a cloud. You can take your pick, whatever cloud service you want. I just make sure I do it once a week. And I also use version control. I commit my changes often. And I push them to the main branch and I understand that Git can be intimidating even for software engineers but it's absolutely worth learning it even if you just learn the basics just having the ability to be able to roll back anything that you may have broken is absolutely wonderful uh, there's nothing wrong with taking a course so back in the early 2010s when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for college the forums I visited said paying for a gaming degree um, just wasn't worth it. It's better to be self-taught and learn everything that you can from YouTube and through personal experience. And while you can learn pretty much anything on YouTube, I've just found that there's some topics, uh, some concepts of design that I found difficult to grasp no matter how many YouTube videos I watched. So a little over a year ago when I was laid off from my last job, a part of my severance package came with LinkedIn learning subscriptions that I could use to brush up on skills. So I decided to take a few game development courses on game design and level design and the concepts were explained to me so much better than I had ever heard before. Now, of course you should do your due diligence and check reviews on courses before you buy them, but sometimes it's okay to just need that little bit of professional polish to really learn what you're trying to learn. Use your debuggers. You should get good at using your tools. The buggers are just one part of the engine that I was underusing, but I found the faster I can debug, the more progress I can make. Print statements are great for some things, but sometimes I just need a little bit more. So I encourage you to learn the blueprint debugger, the console slate debugger, the widget reflector, the state tree debugger. Just look and see what tools are available and try to get good at them. It's okay to work a job while you're pursuing game development. Long story short, Maybe it's just my algorithm, but sometimes I hear people say things like, oh, if you're not going to fully commit, then you're going to fail. If you're not making a big enough sacrifice, then like, what's the point? And I think that's true, but full commitment looks different at different points in people's lives. I think that is wonderful advice. If you're a high school student or a college grad, you have very little responsibility, but hey man, a lot of us got families, a lot of us got kids, and to blow all that stuff up, just to pursue game development isn't worth it. So sure, like for some of us, progress is just gonna be slower, but we'll still get there eventually. It's okay. Do it however you have to do it. I see some people ask, how do you balance game development, a career and a family? And you know, sometimes we just gotta live with imbalances. The people that inspire me to create all talk about how they had a finite duration of time where they had to put in crazy work to get to where they are today. And now they have balance, but in order to accomplish that goal, they just lived with imbalances. And sometimes that can suck, but the good thing is we get to choose our imbalances. So if the choice is for me to sacrifice sleep or family time, I always choose sleep, right? I'm just, I'm so committed to learning game development that I just do it however I have to do it. If I gotta do it tired, then I'll do it tired. If I have to do it alone, then I'll do it alone. If I gotta do it with someone else, I'll do it with someone else. If I can only do it for 30 minutes a day, then that's how I'm gonna do it. Don't just make games acquire skills. For me, part of the appeal of game development is how much I can learn from making a game. But it's very easy to overlook these opportunities to learn and understand things and just follow tutorials. So I encourage you to take your time and build an understanding as you make your games. A lot of what you can learn through game development is transferable to other areas in life like your career. So take your time, show your work. It's natural 
for me to be protective of my work because I pour so much of myself into it. But I learn so much more when I let people see my work. So find some people you can trust and share your work with them and learn to take constructive criticism. You will be so much better for it. Make the game you want to make. It should be obvious, right? But after I realized my dream game was too difficult to make, all I made for a while was infinite scrollers for phones that I never figured out how to run well on phones. <laughs> but the reason I did it was because it seemed like an easy way to make money. I didn't even like infinite scrollers at this point. Like, yeah, I enjoyed Jetpack Joyride, Temple Run, Tiny Wings, but that phase had already passed, so I didn't really enjoy making those games. Now, there's a time and a place for analyzing the market, trying to make a game to fit trends and balancing that with your vision, but I've just found that when I hate the project I'm working on, it's gonna show in my work. Play games. I know it's probably cliche at this point, but I think I've got a more nuanced take here. I'm being told to play games while you're making games. To me, it's frustrating because I just don't have time. I got a wife, I got a kid, I got a nine to five. So some stuff with 80 hour campaigns just won't be played until life calms down a little bit. But I still think it's good to Make time to play games, not just games from well-established large studios, but play games from other creators with a similar skill level to you. Play games from people that are a little bit further along in their journey as well. Doing that is just a great way to stay inspired and really gauge where you're at, pick up on new things that you can learn. The 90-10 rule this is probably the most useful thing I've learned to do. There's a lot that goes into making a game from beginning to end, and sometimes it will be months before I revisited a particular thing like UI, and it felt like I'd constantly have to relearn half the stuff that I already learned. The solution to that problem was getting more reps in on parts of the process as a whole. The 90-10 rule is just whenever I plan a new project, I try to make 90% of it stuff that I've already done before, and 10% of it new stuff that I want to learn. This has worked well with making small games because it allows me to make the games that I want but it puts some guardrails in place to help keep me accountable. It re-solidifies what I'm learning because as I go through that 90%, I can get better at it and make improvements that I want. But it also exposes me to new things that I need to learn. And that's another 10%. Yeah, it's just a great way to make games with some guard guardrails in place. Well, it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, thank you for all the advice that you all have given me and the input that you've shared with me along the way. I look forward to the next year. Hopefully there's an Android and a Steam release in 2025 and maybe a proper devlog series, but we'll see. Happy holidays, y'all. Peace.